What up, tubers? We're at it again. Another how to with Mr. L. Today we're going to dive into Photoshop and play the role of a street artist. How do we create a stencil using Photoshop? How do we use Photoshop to try to be a Banksy and obey, you know, use what these artists have done to inspire us ourselves as artists to do what they do, but in our own style, our own way, with our own flair? Well, that's what we're doing today. So today we tackle the idea of creating a stencil using Photoshop. So first things first, what I like to do is one, obviously think about what I'm going to use to create a stencil, what I'm going to create a stencil out of. Um, it's always important. You want to know what your plan of attack is. You don't want to just come in and be like, ha here I go, I did it. And then you're not actually happy with what you chose. So I <clears throat> already had something in mind. Um, something planned out I usually something hits me and I'm inspired I'm like oh when this come time comes along this is what I want to do this is one of my ideas so let me open up my finder real quick and if you guys are wondering I'm working on a Mac so yes a MacBook Pro uh, so what I'm actually gonna do and these are some of the ones you can already see that I'm working on uh, but I actually want to create a Willy Wonka uh, Gene Wilder was an amazing Willy Wonka probably the Willy Wonka I remember the most not to knock down Johnny Depp but that's, this is the Willy Wonka that I grew up to. So let's drag Willy Wonka into Photoshop. So as our image opens <clears throat> and we look at it and we're like, okay, cool. Here's my, my, my image. So my image is now in Photoshop. I have my image. Like I said, it's in Photoshop. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over here to my layers. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to unlock my background. This way... As I go erase, uh, make a selection, delete, it clears out the background with no issues. It doesn't fill it white with my foreground color or black with my background color. It keeps it checkered. It gives me a checkered background. So when it comes to deleting the background, there's a couple ways we can actually tackle this concept. I can use the amazing eraser, which is the letter E on the keyboard, and just start erasing. But that could be time consuming. I can press W to activate my magic wand and click and create selections. So if I hold shift, I can add to my selection. Now that's another way of doing it. So if I hit delete, it, 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 wipe, it wipes out. So I'll press command D to deselect. Um, I can go get my lasso and use my lasso to create a selection and wipe out the background that I don't want. Looking about Willy Wonka, he has, he has these crazy curls and waves in his hair. So it kind of adds to the character. Uh, go along his coat. Um, if you guys are wondering for this walkthrough, this how-to, I'm actually using my bamboo tablet, my 9x12 tablet, to uh, help out with the situation. If you have great hand control with the mouse, there's another option how you can use the lasso tool. Um, in the classroom, when I teach, some of my students have the privilege of using a bamboo tablet themselves or a Wacom 13-inch Cintiq. So, you know, but benefits of being able to ask for certain items and get them. So I'm gonna continue with my lasso and uh, create my selection. The less I have, the more I have to work with. Yank. And I'm just gonna keep this random shape right here and just leave it there. So I'm gonna press delete. So now it's all checkered out. Um, if you get an OCD and you like, you miss something and it's bothering you, then just go ahead and, that was a horrible selection. It happens, mistakes happen. We're human, I'm human. That's bound to happen, so no big deal. Um, you two as Photoshop users will make mistakes, as artists will make mistakes. So, Command D <coughs> to turn off my selection, the dancing ants as I like to call them. So next thing is now that I cleared out my background and we see the checkered boxes in the back, we have our Gene Wilder Willy Wonka. Um, I'm actually gonna go into image, adjustments, and I'm going to desaturate or Command Shift U and make it black and white. Now when it comes to stencils, there's two, I like to think two ways of doing a stencil. You can either go the simple way of doing the stencil, which is desaturate, which we just did. Uh, go into image, go into adjustments, and then go to threshold and get the outline silhouette um, going, which then I can pull the slider left or right to add detail or take away detail. Um, <clears throat> and hit OK. So that's like easy step number one. Uh, this is one route. The other route is let me do Command Z to undo what I just did. I'm going to press Command J. I duplicate my layers. So I have two, two Wonkas. Uh, Wonka number one, I'm going to go image, adjustments, and threshold, which is the basic section that I just showed you. Um, I'm going to adjust my slider a little bit. Because I do want some of these details, but not completely. And I'll hit OK. I'm going to turn off that layer. Now, what I'm going to do with layer zero is I'm going to go into filters, filter gallery. 
let it open. Um, sometimes by default, this happens. Yours is like this, so you don't see anything. So just click the little arrow or the little triangle to drop it down, and you click on cut out. So if I do a command zero, it zooms out, puts Gene Wilder in focus. I have currently four levels of what you can say are going to be cutouts that we'd have. Um, each one of these colors represents the amount of stencils we would need to print out and cut to spray in the complete Gene Wilder. Now, as it is right now, it's kind of choppy, kind of jaggedy, which isn't like technically bad. It really isn't, <clears throat> but we can actually adjust the simplicity of our lines. See that, you know, eh, maybe this way. Okay, so you see this way, we gave us more, a little bit more of a detail. It looks a little bit more humanistic. I can do the same thing with the edge fidelity, and this is all hit and miss, to be honest. It's all trial and error, as is usually when we're doing a stencil. It didn't seem like it did much, so I'm going to do Command Z. Um, let me see my levels. If I bump up my levels, it adds to the texture of the cutouts. So the darker the cutout, the, you know, the different level of cutout you'll need, the different layer it'll be. Um, you like the way I like to think about this is if you ever had to get something silk screened, or if you sent something to a print shop. You know, in the design world, you have your four your four print colors. You have your cyan, your yellow, your magenta, and your black. And those are the four colors that blend together, that overlay each other to create the millions of colors available out there in the world. Uh, same concept, same similar concept. Each one of these little areas, these cutouts, would be like this. This this would be my black. This this color right here would be my yellow. And then my other color, my lighter color would be my cyan. And then I have my magenta. So hopefully that makes sense and understanding uh, to you. And it's like, okay, cool, I get it, totally cool. So um, I do this because it gives me that, that level of layers, that level of texture of final process. So if I hit okay, so I have my Wonka like this, and then I have my Wonka like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press W on my to activate my magic wand. The reason I'm doing this is because I honestly want to select everything that's white. But see what happens when you don't pay attention. You gotta make sure you're on the right layer. So right now I actually selected layer zero. So I'm gonna press Command D. I'm gonna click on layer zero, turn it on, click on what is the white of the Wonka. I'm going to select, select similar. This will select everything that is white in my document. I'm going to press delete and then command D. So now we see two Wonkas. We see the levels of Wonka and then we see the final level of Wonka, which for me, I would say this would be the layer that I either use black on to create the final little intricacies, the little details that finalize my piece. So part two is let me go beast mode and try to pull off a uh, shepherd fairy and do the layers of paint um, or even a Banksy because they do levels of or layers of paint to get that final image across. Uh, but if you think about it, I just walk you through how to create a stencil. Uh, you have the basic way, which would be just your one straight up, everything's gonna be one color. Or if you wanted to even keep it basic and cut out, you know, this is going to be this color, that's one stencil. The hat's going to be one color, that's another stencil. And so on, you have it that route too. And that's why I showed you guys both ways because the art cutout shows you your layers. So then I'm, I'll be like one, two, three, four cutouts. And then we have the added final piece that ties it all in. So hopefully, hopefully this helps you out. You guys understand how easy it is to use Photoshop to find an image, bring it into Photoshop, and create a stencil. Hopefully now you too can do this successfully and hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and if you did, and I, I, I think you did, I know you did, you're actually gonna go click on the subscribe button below and subscribe to the channel and be like, you know what, thank you Mr. L, that was a pretty sweet technique, I appreciate that and I can actually use that myself. Um, hopefully I broke it down enough for you that it makes sense and simplify it because that's my goal with this is to be able to do these techniques and simplify them for you so they make sense so with that being said thank you for watching I hope you tune in and please click the link below subscribe so that we are a team united we are one because we got it. the goal is if you ain't learning if you ain't having fun you ain't learning and what are we gonna do we're gonna have fun and learn so with that being said, we out. See you guys.